Good Monday morning, everybody, and welcome to March. It is March 1st. Uh, we made it. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Spring is right around the corner. I believe spring is the 20th, so it's just a little less than three weeks away. Amazing, isn't it? Um, so, uh, Saturday, we got our, made our way through and finished the, the uh, Gospel of Luke. Um, I think we started the Gospel of Luke sometime around September 17th is the date that's in my mind. Could be wrong on that. So it took us a good spell to get through the Gospel of Luke. I'm guessing it's going to take us at least that long to get through Acts. Um, and Acts will be a little tougher go because there's a little more research that I have to do um, for for Acts than, than Luke. Um, with all, especially when we get into the travels of, of Paul, St. Paul and all of that. So it gets a little bit complicated. So I'm guessing we're going to be in this one for a good spell. It will probably be well past um, the prime of summer by the time we're done with the gospel or the, the book of Acts. So uh, prepare yourselves. But um, if you uh, want to give somebody a wonderful gift, uh, just give them the link to um, the starting of the series of Luke. Um, so I said it's a free gift. So uh, And that's all on YouTube. So if you go to my YouTube channel, again, I think it's if you uh, look for September, you know, you search for September. I think we started around the 17th. My memory serves me correct. So, and uh, of course, we are in March, so we're going to be coming up. The middle of March will be coming up on one year since we started doing these. We'll, we'll talk about that when we get there. So today we're going to jump into Acts. And I've kind of debated about how much uh, to bite off today on Acts. Um, I decided just to deal with the first five verses. So we're going to look at Acts 1, verses 1 to 5. So a little bit of a story or a little bit of history. First few days I'll share a little bit about Acts with you. Uh, each day so that we get some manageable bites. Um, of course, Acts is believed to be the second book written by the author of Luke. Luke and Acts generally looked at as being the same author. Um, when you look at that in the in the in the, the writing and the vocabulary and the style and all of that, um, it very much appears to be uh, the same author. There's only a very minute uh, that I'm aware of a very minute number of scholars that, that try to pr propose that. That, uh, that that Acts and Luke are written by somebody totally, two different people. Um, but Acts and Luke are some of the best Greek in the New Testament. Hebrews, of course, is the best, ironically. But but Luke and Acts are very. Whoever wrote Luke and Acts um, was very was was learned, and they and they their their Greek was is good. Let's put it that way. Um, so that's what we've got with with Acts. Um, there are some, you know, some interesting things. We'll talk about that more tomorrow when we get into the Ascension story. Um, there are some that believe that originally this was all one book that it was written on, uh, and that, that the uh, introduction here, the prologue that we jump into today in Acts, was added. Um, the first few verses of Acts were added to the second book when somebody. You know that it maybe have existed on two different scrolls, um, that because the, the, the size of the size of those two books, Acts and Luke, are about the size of a normal scroll. Uh, to have them together on in one scroll would have been a monstrous scroll. Um, and so the thought is is that they were written on two two scrolls and that, that it was broke, and so somebody had a copy. That's the theory uh, of of. The, what we call Acts now, really the second half of Luke's gospel. Um, and they're like, well, this just jumps in at a weird spot. And so they created the, the beginning. That's one theory. I'm not sure that I ascribe to that theory at all. I, I think that it was probably written um, as a sec second, you know, um, writing that whoever you sat down and wrote Luke. Um, and the timeline, it probably, you know, again, it's around 80, 85-ish, um, the time that this is probably written is, I think, pretty, I think it's pretty certain that it's in that timeline again, fairly shortly after he wrote Luke. Um, I think that there's a real possibility that whoever wrote them intended mm -hmm. to write a third edition. Um, it's hard to know that, impossible to know that, but I suspect that probably was, but who knows, it could have gotten sick or ill or what have you, imprisoned, uh, a number of things, and unable to write more of the history. And that's why we don't have um, the death of Paul. Because by the time that the Acts and Luke were written, Paul was already long gone, and as well as 
most of the rest of the disciples. Um, so why we don't have m the more about the what happened to them? Well, I think he just whoever wrote it just didn't get a chance to get to that part um, for some reason. We don't know why. Um, again, it's believed and it's always been uh, positioned that that this was this is the physician Luke who traveled with with Paul um, and uh, that wrote this. Um, I've mentioned during our study of Luke that I've always called Luke the peacemaker. Well, it's not he's not the peacemaker. I don't call him the peacemaker because of the Gospel of Luke. I call him the peacemaker because of Acts. And so this is where we'll get into where where the author of Luke uh, and Acts is acting as someone trying to bring these these factions of the church, early church together to try to smooth over some of the differences. Um, that's what I like about the author. He, he seems to be doing his level best to try to come to a common ground. We could use a guy like Luke right now in this world. Uh, use a lot of guys like that, or gals. So, with that, we've talked almost as much as I'm supposed to talk. Let's jump into the first five verses of Acts 1 and talk about them a little bit, and then I'll let you go, and we'll come back tomorrow with a little more history, and then we'll talk about the ascension. Um, one Chapter 1, verses 1 to 5. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during forty days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Of course, that is the promise of Pentecost, the coming of the Spirit. Which we have in Luke and in, in Acts, rather, and we'll get to there for for, for very long. Um, we'll we, we'll be getting to the to the Pentecost within a, just a few days. Um, the big thing that would be troubling us there was that we remember when we ended at Luke, rather, all of those things happened on the last day on on Sunday. It was a busy day, right? And Sunday he rose and he 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 walked to Emmaus and he came back to Jerusalem, tagged along behind, apparently, um, the, the, the two disciples, and boom, there he was, kind of startling everybody, if you remember how that went. Um, and then he eats the fish, and then they go, he tells them, uh, opens up to them all this, all of the predictions about him in the scripture. Again, we really wish we had that the bullet points, don't we? All those places that Jesus had put down, for you know, that would have been a wonderful thing for them to have shared with us, but unfortunately we don't have it. Um, and then, of course, then he, they go out and he does, and we have the ascension. And all of that's done on Sunday. All of that's done on Resurrection Day. And here we've just said that he stays with them for 40 days. What gives with that? Um, and I suppose some people can take that and, and have find that troubling. Um, I don't find that troubling whatsoever. Um, and I don't think you should let it trouble you either. Um, the, the idea, as I mentioned, I believe, uh, as we were working our way at the, towards the end of Luke, um, there's somewhat of the idea that, that that at the end of Luke we're all we're in that eighth day we're in that end you know the same day we're in today we've been there for 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 two thousand years or almost two thousand years not quite two thousand years yet but another about another decade to go um, and we'll get there most of us um, but at any rate that it's that idea that time is irrelevant. Uh, during that period of time, during the time we're in, time is relevant to God. What is time to God? Time, not much. Um, it means very little to God. Um, and so, therefore, in the writing of the story, it's, it's it's the idea of the the progression of it. It's all a focus. Again, Luke is really focusing on on the resurrection. There, now, guess who? What we're we're focusing more on? We we were going to have this. Quick, we've quickly talked about this this 40 days which is of course is the time that we're in you know we're, we're getting ready now we're, we're getting coming up on Christmas well, we're not in that time yet we're going through the 40 days of the wilderness but then we'll get into that after Easter um, as we go through the Pentecost series season but then we but then we get into the ascension then we get into Pentecost really the focus is more on the coming of the spirit here at the early time that's really their focus now where it's not so much about the ascension and the time Jesus spent with him, it's about the coming of the Spirit. And from there, moving forward through Luke, or through Acts, rather. So, 
Um, with that, I don't want to go too much longer than that because I try to keep, again, I'm trying to keep these down within 10 minutes nowadays so that they're a little more manageable bites for all of you. Um, I, I know that when videos get too long, I myself, if I see something that's too long, um, I tend to say, eh, I'll look at that later and I click save and I, and so, all too often I don't get back to it. So with that, I'm going to let you go. Tomorrow we'll talk more about the, the history of, of Acts or the, the build into Acts and then we'll talk about the Ascension and we'll go from there. So with that, I'm going to let you go today. Enjoy the day. Tomorrow's going to even be more beautiful. It's beautiful out there right now, but tomorrow we're going to, I think we're supposed to be in the 50s tomorrow. So praise God. It's going to be sloppy out in the country though. So have a wonderful day. And as always, please, please, please be a blessing to someone today. Oh, and before I go, I want to thank all the people that were helping with the Christmas decorations yesterday. We went through and pulled out, pulled out the Christmas decorations and reorganized them and sorted and saw what we have and kind of did an inventory of stuff uh, and some planning. Uh, so thank you to, to Tiffany, to Brenda, to Catherine, and to Kim. And of course, I helped a little bit. I carried stuff, you know, moved boxes. That's, that's what I'm good for. So... Thank you to those folks that helped with that. They really did a remarkable job. You can tell them, you know, kudos for that. We found some stuff we didn't know we had, um, some ribbons and stuff. So praise God. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you in the morning. Bye-bye.